Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we'll be looking at the flow map. Now, the flow map is really great for tracking object movement. And uh, as you can see on the screenshot on the right-hand side, we're seeing movement between multiple counties within inside of the state of Florida. We'll be looking actually at a fairly similar example when we uh, do our live example here in a few moments, as we'll be looking at the migration of individuals from different counties within the state of Florida as well. So it has the uh, ability to show directional trends really well. So by the size of the line, as well as the numbers that are indicated over each one of the bubbles here. In this case, you can see there's an indicator that's been shown that shows us Dade County had 18,136. Duval County had 1,114 100, movement towards that county. So it's, a, it's good for showing that directional trend. You actually have multiple things that you can tweak and, and change with inside of the format paintbrush of this visual. I think you'll really enjoy this one. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the flow map works. All right, so like I said, in this example, we're going to be looking at the migration trends in the state of Florida. So people moving from one county to another in the state of Florida. And so I have a data set that's prepared for this. We'll go up and pull that data set in. And we're going to be using this U.S. County Migration file. This is actually one that I've gotten from the census. And I did a very small subset of what is, was available because there was a lot of data that shows trends of people moving from county to county. In this case, you can see I've kind of only brought in ones that had more than 1,000 as far as movement between the different counties here. So a lot of movement between the state of Florida, but you'll also see occasionally some movement to other states as well. So let's go ahead and load this into our data set. So we're going to get this migration count uh, table that shows up here now inside of our data set. And then next, we're going to go bring in the flow map visual. So we can do that by going up to the marketplace up at the top here where it says custom visuals. And once this launches, we'll go ahead and bring in and type the flow map that we want to return back and use inside of this example. All right, so I've selected the flow map here. I'll go ahead and add that into our Power BI visualizations pane, and you should see it pop open here in just a moment. There it goes. And now that that's been added, we can use and bring that into our report. So we can select that visual, bring that into our report, go ahead and maybe make this a little larger so we can actually see what we're working with here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to place the from county, which is the county that the movement started from, as the origin, the to county as our destination, and then we'll use the migration count in some of these other areas here. So I might bring in the migration count uh, as our width. I think I'll probably bring in the color will be our from county. And if you had latitude and longitude, you could plug that in here as well. So if you had the latitude and longitude of each of these counties, that would work. If you don't have latitude and longitude, then it's going to use a Bing search to return back the value. So as long as the, the, the values that you have for the county here, in this case, match up to what's in Bing, then it should be able to return back some results. I'm also going to place in the migration count into the label section here, and maybe as a tooltip as well, in case we want to see it as a tooltip. All right, so there's a few fields I'm not using, but that's okay for this scenario. I'm going to go ahead and select and use the ones that I have here. And then you can see the map has been generated in the center of my screen here where you can see some movement to Texas. You can see some movement to California. But there's a few things here that I want to really focus in on is maybe just like the top movement, so the movement between the top counties, because you can see this kind of becomes a mess here. If you hover above any of these, you can see that you can get some great detail here. So I can see people that are moving to Duval County, for example, and I can see how many have moved back and forth between different counties that are close by. I can even see here ones that have moved from Dade County, that's uh, kind of Miami Beach area, to Los Angeles or to Texas. I think this one here is Texas, uh, Harris County, Texas. So this is good stuff, but what I'd like to do is I want to make it so that I can be more easily see and understand what's going on in this map, because right now it just looks like a bunch of spaghetti, right? So to change and, and modify this, we're going to go underneath the format paintbrush here. And you can change a few of the settings in here. So for example, underneath the visual style, you can change the type of map that we're seeing. So right now it's showing what's called great circle, which is going to be an indicator of the circles that we have on the maps here. But what we're going to do instead is what I'd like to do is I'd like to see this as a flow map. And when you see it as a flow map, you'll see it actually reduces the number of lines that are used. In fact, the one that was used for Los Angeles and, Her and Texas have now kind of merged together and they split off right here. So it's a little smoother, you can see here, it's a little smoother, it's a lot easier to see what's going on within the map itself. You can also change things like maybe you want it to be based off the destination. Right now it's grouping them all by the origin, maybe you want it to be based off the destination, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this scenario, so you can see our lines have kind of faded here a bit. But if you base it off the origin, you can see it's reduced the number of lines, and you can also limit the number of groupings that you do here. 
So if you wanted to limit it even more, you can say, well, I want to group it by three, and then kind of changing the limitations of that grouping quite a bit. I'm going to leave it as five for this scenario. And then we'll go ahead and work our way down to the next setting here. So if we go down to the legend section, underneath the legend section, you can actually create a legend right now. The legend is kind of turned off, even though you see a, a legend here as far as the size, the width of the lines. If I turn on this autofill option, you can see that it'll actually add in and show us the values that we have here. Now, one thing that we might want to do as well is you're going to see we have in our from county, we have that we're using the from county as the color, but right now it's not really being utilized in the map. That's because there's a setting in here underneath color that will work with this. So I know I turned on the legend section, but let's actually take a step down to the color section and turn on the autofill option for the color. So that way you can actually see a difference in the colors that are appearing here, not only in the legend, but also in the map. So I turned on auto, co auto color or auto fill here for the colors. You can see you can change the colors if you wanted to. You could also go back up to the legend section now and you can see those showing up here. You could even change the names of how they appear here inside the legend. So if I wanted to change Miami-Dade County to something else, for whatever reason, I could do that. Maybe I want to strip off the state of Florida, the name of Florida off of that. You could do that. And I could make it just say the county name if I wanted to. Or maybe I want to take off the word county. Just make it very clear that this is, we already know we're looking at a county map. We could take more things off if we wanted to. But in this case, I'm just going to take the state of Florida off because we can see all of these are coming from Florida. You could also bump up the text size of that if you wanted to. So I can bump up the text size of the legend here uh, very easily. And then we can kind of keep working our way through these settings here. So underneath the color section, we already looked at this kind of briefly here, but you could specify specific colors again that you want. So you can see that Orange County and Palm Beach County are really close to each other. So you may want to change the color of one of those so it's a little bit different. Let's make it something that stands out a little bit more, maybe a purple color here, for example. And so now we can see if we drill in or, or zoom in, you can see those purple colors highlighted here a lot more easily. If we work our way down a little bit more, you can see underneath the width here, you can actually adjust the width that's being used for these. You can change the scale at which the width is determined, or you can actually change the maximum value here. I might bump this up to something like 50 so it really stands out. And so you can really see the difference between the values in here a lot more easily now. So you can kind of play around with that, tweak it to be whatever makes sense for you. But uh, in this case, obviously, I want to make it so it's a little easier to read those values that are coming in and coming out. All right, so that's the width section. Under the bubble section, of course, you can change what the bubble is determined on. Right now, it's being based off of the destination. So you can see the slices of the bubble are sliced by the destination of where somebody moved to. You can change this to maybe based off the origin if you wanted to. And then you'll notice then there's not slices because the, the, in this case, the way that this is mapped out, is everything's based off the origin or the, the location that things were from. You could also have this set to both, so you can actually see both of the dots or bubbles showing up here. But in my case, I'm going to leave this as being based off of the destination. You could also adjust the scale of that if you wanted to. If you wanted to bump up the scale so it's a little larger, those, those bubbles are larger, you can bump up the scale here by changing the uh, scale percentage. You'll also see there's an option here called Label, and I, I do like this option, the, the Label option. If you select the, uh, oh, by the way, the show slice here, if you turn off show slice, you can see what that does. It just turns off the slices of the bubble. Uh, but let's move back over here to the label section. I do enjoy the label section here because you have this ability to, if you turn on the label, it puts these labels on the map. Now, clearly that's too many labels to be able to see at one time. So what I like to do is I actually change the label. So rather than showing all the labels, to show them by when you click on them. So if, let me reset this so it kind of shakes itself loose here. Let's say that's by click. And then what happens now is the next time I go to click on a county, so say, for example, Broward County here, if I click on that, you can see this label now appearing here that's easier to see what the numbers are without necessarily having to hover above it. So it's not really a tooltip. It's kind of a label that's placed on top of it that stays there once you click on something. And if I were to click on it again, that label would go away. Or if I would click on this one, you would see now Miami-Dade show up as the label. Okay. You can also change the background color. So you can see it's using this kind of gray color in the background. If you wanted to, you could change it to something more that stands out. That's a little easier to read. And you can change the opacity here as well if you wanted to. So now it's really kind of starting to stand out. I can actually read those numbers now. Uh, underneath the detail format section here, it also is related to that label. You can change the sort order of that label. Right now it's set to descending. You can make it ascending if you wanted to. You can tell it if you had too many values in here that you only want to show the top five values, for example. And you could also add prefixes or postfixes here. So for example, maybe I want to say that I had uh, this number of people moved from one location to another. So you can add a postfix of people here. And I'm going to re-sort that as descending. So that's the detail format section. Pretty nice. Uh, as we continue down here, you'll see the map controls here. You can actually change the type of 
color of the map, or the, uh, the map type, I should say. So I can make this more of an aerial map if I wanted to. I can make this more of a gray map if I wanted to. You can certainly switch this back and forth to whatever makes sense for you. I'm going to leave it as a color map. You can also control the, uh, turn on or off the map controls. So panning, what pan means is the ability for you to hold down your mouse and move left or right. If I uncheck or turn off pan, I can't do that anymore. So I can click and try and move back and forth all I want, but it's not going to work. Uh, if you turn on or off the zoom feature, when it's off, you, can, you, you cannot use your scroll bar, your scroll on your mouse to be able to zoom in and out. But if you turn that back on, you can use the scroll on your mouse to move back and forth or in and out. Auto fit, if you turn off auto fit, auto fit is basically where it automatically adjusts to put everything within the context of the map. So say, for example, I turn that back on, you'll see it auto fits to show all of the points that we have on our map. So you're seeing everything here on the one visual that we're working with. And you can still see that label appearing here. That label is going to continue to show until I click on that point again. And you may want it on, so I might want to be able to see that to continue to show here throughout the duration of my use, usage of the map. Underneath map element, you'll find a few other things here that are kind of interesting. So underneath map element, you can actually turn on or turn off certain map elements. So you can actually you know, hide the roads, for example, if you want, don't want to see the roads. You could hide the forest, that's the green area that you see here. And you can even hide the label, so it's a very plain map if you wanted to. Uh, you may turn some of these things back on, and maybe you want to see the cities. So as you see some bigger cities start to show up on the map, maybe you want to see icons for you know, intentional elements that are on the map. You can you know, show or hide buildings or areas. There's all kinds of things you can kind of hide or show underneath the map element section. Underneath the advanced section, you can actually turn on or off caching. Caching is on by default, so the idea behind that is the next time that you go to open this report, it will have already cached all of the results for the geo points or the geo coding that it did whenever it sent this information to Bing. You can also turn on this relocate option. You can see that when you turn on relocate, it actually has all these different points in here. And you can relocate a certain point if you wanted to. So if I wanted to move this Harris County point, for, for example, I could click and drag it somewhere else if I desired to. In this case, I'm fine with the geocoding that it did, so I'm going to leave that alone. All right, so that's really it for this map. Uh, of course, you can turn on or turn off a title if you wanted to. You can change the background color, which wouldn't make a ton of sense here because there's not uh, really a ton of background you can see anyways. But you have all the traditional elements that you have of all the custom visuals you've worked with in the past show up here on the bottom, just like always. Well, that's really it for this custom visual. I hope you guys enjoyed this module and look forward to showing you our next custom visual, visual in our next module.